Welcome, Ciro. Thank you. I'm really delighted to have you here with I, our students. I'm, I'm delighted as well. Uh, tell us something about yourself. Uh, Ciro Soranjaku, who is he? <laughs> Ciro Soranjaku. Uh, I was born and raised in Thailand. Um, born to a... Uh, I'm a PK, my dad a minister. Mm -hmm. um, grew up in a country where majority were Buddhists. Um, and then I have three siblings. How does it feel to be Siro Soranya? <laughs> it feels okay. Okay is good, I think. <laughs> when you say that you are an Adventist that grew up in a Buddhist environment, if you were to come up with a couple of sentences to define that experience, what would that be? It was difficult. It was, it was hard being a minority, but it also forces you to think through what is it, what, what does it mean to be a Christian dude in this context? So you were exposed to uh, a different worldview and you need to kind of realign yourself. So you have, I was forced to think through things very carefully. That sounds like something good to do. I, I think so. But it painful is. sometimes. Well, not, not too bad. Not too bad. Then you have, you, have a lot of, you have a lot of really good Buddhist people. And you have to ask yourself, so what, what does it mean to be Christian in this context? So that was really helpful. You have been a, an employee of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Thailand, and uh -huh. then you came to the U.S. Could you tell us a little bit about your life story? Oh, my life story. I was... I finished my undergraduate in Singapore, uh, Bachelor of Theology. Then I started working as a pastor for three and a half years in Bangkok, pastoring two churches. And then uh, they asked me to go to do my graduate work um, because they were going to start a seminary in Thailand. So I left, this was in 80, 87, I think. Uh, no, 85. And then I was there for for two years. Fin when I finished my work, I came back to Thailand and, and worked for the college for five years. Mm -hmm. And then afterward, I worked for ADRA for two years, then before I came to the U.S. Then you came as a gift from Thailand to Loma Linda University. And I don't know about a gift. <laughs> well, we certainly believe uh, that. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us about your Claremont experience, if the you mind. Claremont? Claremont was busy, just a lot of busy work, mm -hmm. because I had to, um, I was working, f I had to work to earn my money, mm -hmm. and then go to school at the same time, so it was a lot of busy work. Didn't have a lot of time to kind of enjoy casual conversation with my colleagues, but there were times, but education was really good. And it has been so good that you have produced several books with a lot of help. One of the books is the one we're using for our class, RELR 475. Mm -hmm. It's entitled Spirituality, Health, and Wholeness. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about this book and what it means for you? Okay. Uh, I was at a time teaching this class and there were a couple of questions about, so what should go into this class? what kind of topic we should address and all that. And so, uh, at the time, I think WAS came a few years ago. The Western Association of a School and College. Right, and then they came to School Medicine at the time. And then School Medicine recommends certain, certain topics. And so I thought, well, if that's the case, then we should, the certain topic we should, we should add in this kind of uh, content, patient relation, cultural diversity, care for dying and bereave. And I think uh, the other part was the attempt or desire to, to have a more conceptual, theoretical piece about so what is, how do you conceptualize spirituality within the context of healthcare? It's an attempt. Well, and a very good, and it has been widely received, and it has been used not only at Loma Linda University. Uh -huh. uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with the book outside of Loma Linda University? Oh, um, I. 
I know some other school that used this as a as a textbook I think and then there were some references that were used by chaplains in different places as a resource book yeah what is your favorite passage or chapter or <laughs> segment from the book favorite chapter um, other than mine of course uh, of course <laughs> <laughs> That would be my chapter. <laughs> <laughs> what about it? Are, do, are you? I think there was a really nice chapter by Ken Pargaman mm -hmm. that did a re really good research on um, on um, health crisis and all that, documented a lot of stuff, which I thought was really good. And who is Pargaman in the context of a spirituality? Oh, and Pargaman is a very well known name in in, in the field. Yeah, but I, then then I like mm. every other ch every chapter, mm. and and what the the first part was more theoretical, the second part, which you contributed was more on the practice of it, you know, the, the cultural diversity, dealing with difficult patient, uh, care for a dying, bereaved, and and the, the general principle that Jim Greek talk about. Yeah. Any advice for a student reading this book? Uh, no, it's actually an easy read. And uh, easy to follow with some guidelines uh, that at the at the big at the back at the front of every chapter. I think some in interesting guided question that aim to help you focus. So the book has tools on how to read it. Questions that help yeah, the student yeah, focus. Some basic basic guidelines. I really thank you, Ciro, for coming to R E L R four seventy five, and in the name of my students, <laughs> thank you. Thank you.